In last week's sermon, we saw the arriving of Jesus in the wilderness. We saw him being baptized by John. We also saw the appearance of the Trinity when the Father told from the skies. We saw the Son being baptized and the Spirit descending like a dove. And then there was a voice that proclaimed that this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And we saw after that great introduction, after that great introduction of who Jesus was, we saw Jesus being led into a wilderness to be tempted by Satan. While he was tempted, he did not yield to temptation. Anybody happy about that? And so today as we look at the passage that will be before us, we will see Jesus start his public ministry and call his first followers. So if you are willing and able, would you please stand with me today for the reading of God's word? We'll be reading Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came into Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Passing along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, who were in their boat, mending their nets. And immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired servants and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Be you may be seated. Just for a few moments today, I want to talk from this subject. God uses ordinary people. God uses ordinary people. If we look at verse 14, I'm going to skip verse 14 today because we will pick up John's imprisonment later on in this series. But I want us to look at verses 15 through 20 today. There were three things that stuck out to me in these particular verses. The first thing was the kingship of Jesus. The second thing is the irresistible call of Jesus. And the third thing is the call of Jesus is transforming. The, the kingship of Jesus, the irresistible call of Jesus, and that the call of Jesus is transforming. The first thing we see is the kingship of Jesus. What we see here is that Jesus arrives in Galilee. He arrives in Galilee, and at the time of Jesus arriving in Galilee, it was the most multicultural region in Palestine. There were Jews and Gentiles there. Brothers and sisters, this is good news. You might as well get happy about this, because Jesus arrives in the most multicultural place in Palestine, Jews and Gentiles. So in Isaiah, it talked, there was a prophecy that talked about that there will be one who comes who would be the light of the Gentiles. In the ESV, it say the light of the nations, but it, it's the light of the Gentiles. That's you and I. Because the Old Testament practically was about the saving of the Jews. But when Jesus shows up, Jesus shows up into a place where they're not just Jewish people. Amen. Amen. They're Jews and Gentiles. Jesus begins his message, his public ministry, in a place where people would hear him. More than one group of people. Good news, brothers and sisters. So Jesus proclaims the good news of God, which is, listen to what he says. 
the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This verse is significant in, in, in the message of what Jesus was preaching. It's significant because he is saying, I'm, I'm going to break this verse down to you. He's saying each one of these phrases means something. Listen to this. Let's look at this first phrase. The time is fulfilled. That's how he starts. The time is fulfilled. What Jesus is saying here is that the anticipated time of the promised one is here. Amen. He said, you, we, we've been looking for a Messiah. You've been looking for the Redeemer. You've been waiting for the hope of Israel. He says, it is here. Brothers and sisters, Jesus was walking in. What Jesus was saying was this. Redemption is here now. Your way out is here now. Your deliverance is here. So Jesus walks up. He says, the time is fulfilled. The long-awaited Messiah is here. The whole entire Bible, the whole entire Old Testament had one job to point us to Jesus. That the whole entire Old Testament had one job is to point us to Jesus. I'm going to just read some scriptures that, that, that I know I've said since I've been here, and I know that you've heard it before. Anybody remember Genesis 3.15? That, that, that the seed of the woman, watch this, will bruise the head of the serpent. That was Jesus. In, in, in Isaiah, in Isaiah, in chapter 7 and chapter 9, it talked about a child will be born and he, we will call him Emmanuel. That's Jesus. There's, in chapter 9, it says, uh, we will call him uh, a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, everlasting father, the prince of peace. That's Jesus. Amen? They, they listen, they listen to this. In, in the New Testament, Simeon, Simeon in the Gospel of Luke was promised that he would not die until he saw the Lord's Messiah. And when baby Jesus was born, guess what he said? This is him. This is him. Galatians tells us that in the fullness of time, in the right time, God sent Jesus to us to be born under the law to, re to redeem those who were under the law. So scripture has but one job, to point us to Jesus. So we know now Jesus shows up. Jesus says the time is fulfilled. Jesus say, I'm in the house. I'm here, brothers and sisters. I am here. Is anybody happy about that? That Jesus came. And not only did he come, he's still here. Yeah. Amen. The time is fulfilled. And the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God is at hand. What, what is he saying? Not only is he saying that I'm here, I'm the Messiah, I'm the one you've been looking for. He said, as a matter of fact, I am the king. And because I am the king, the kingdom is already here. Amen? The kingdom is here. He's, he's getting ready to begin to preach this liberating gospel, the gospel that will set folk free, the gospel that will provide redemption, restoration, and transformation. Jesus is saying, I am here. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. What he's saying, God's rule and reign is here on the earth. You ever been to an airport and, and the plane lands? You, you ever been in the plane and when it lands, when it hits the ground and it rolls? Does anybody get happy? Does anybody get happy that the plane is made back down to the ground? I do. I love being on the planes when people start clapping. When the plane land. That, that's something. Brothers and sisters, what, what Jesus is saying is that my feet have touched the ground. My feet have touched earth. Brothers and sisters, that's a time to clap. Because he came to be our redemption. He came to be our hope. He is the hope for all humanity. Amen? 
That's why I don't, I don't, I don't subscribe to folk that say, oh, y'all believe this white gospel, this right here. Brothers and sisters, he came to earth for everybody. Amen. 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 Hey, man, I'm so glad. There's some stuff that people may look at me funny because of my skin complexion in some places. Oh, yes, it, it happens. But before God, I'm beloved. <laughs> Amen. Before him, I belong to him. He embraces me. And guess what? If your skin don't look like mine, he embraces you too. Amen. That's good news, brothers and sisters. So the hope for all mankind was here on earth. The kingdom of God is at hand. After he says that, that I'm here, the kingdom is here. He says this. Repent. 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 What he's saying, brothers and sisters, is to change. Stop doing what you've been doing. Hello? Yeah. Amen. Amen? He came. If, if we were going to be able to continue to do what we were doing, guess what? He wouldn't have to come. <laughs> he came because we wasn't doing stuff right. He didn't come and say, I'm going to make y'all do right. He came so we would be empowered to do what's right. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, he came. He said, change your mind, change your behavior, turn away from sin. What he was calling us to do was realign our life with his will. Amen. 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 Anybody glad that he came? Yes. Brothers and sisters, we have done some stuff. Hello? Yeah. I say this often. I've done some stuff I don't want my mama to know about. Yeah. Amen. Amen. My mama may not know, but he knows. And he's so good that he came. He came to give me an opportunity to change. He came so I would be able to repent. It's not in me. It's not in me to change. Because what I would do is I will make excuses in order for me to keep doing what I'm doing. But he came to give us a way out. He knew that we could not do it on our own. So God sent him to come to earth to be our way out, the only hope for humanity, the only hope for mankind. So he comes with a message telling us to repent, giving us an opportunity to receive him by faith through grace. Telling us, change the way. When we repent, we don't repent for a moment. Repentance should be with the intentions on following him exclusively. Him and him alone. When we repent, how many people in here just have to repent one time? I know. I know. Hey, look, that should be a daily, watch this, a daily activity multiple times throughout the day because sometimes we don't think like we should think. Yes. Amen? Yes. Get up and pray, stomp your toe, and all that just went out the door. <laughs> Amen? Somebody cut you off in traffic? All that scripture reading you did this morning? Out the door. They cut you off in line at the store, they look at you funny? Out the door, brothers and sisters, we got to repent it's a daily activity. Yeah. Repentance is not a one-time act. So he's saying repent. Repent. He wants you to repent, to change, to turn to him, to lean into him, to rest in him. Why? Because he is your only hope. That's what he wants. Brothers and sisters, he wants us to turn to him, to turn from our wicked ways, to rest in him. I don't care how long you've been in church. I don't care if you've been here all your life. You need to repent. We all need to turn to him, turn from our wicked ways, and turn to God and God alone. Repent and believe in the gospel. What it's saying, believe in the good news. Believe 
in him because Jesus Christ is the gospel. He is the good news. Amen. Jesus Christ is the gospel. The gospel, the word was made flesh and dwelled among us. It is him. Believe in the gospel. He's saying, believe what I'm telling you. Jesus is the only way, contrary to whatever we may see on TikTok and here on Facebook. Jesus is the only way. Believe in the gospel, repent and believe in him. He's the only one that's able to take our sins away. Y'all remember last week when he was baptized, he wasn't being baptized because he did anything. He wasn't being baptized because he needed to be baptized. He was being baptized because he was taking our sins upon his shoulders. He was taking our sins and he was burying them. And he was raising into the newness of life for our sake. So brothers and sisters, repent and believe the gospel. It is the kingship of Jesus. He is the true and living king. Second thing we see is the call of Jesus is irresistible. Look at this. Look at verse 16. Verse 16 said he was passing along the sea of Galilee. He saw Simon and Andrew, the brother of Simon, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. And the next word says that they took some time and they thought about what he said. It's right there, ain't it? <laughs> they, they, they took some time and they said, wait, let us, let us think about it. Look, look, not only, not only did he call them, tell him, tell them that he was going to make them fishers of men. Then he goes on and calls, uh, he goes down to verse 19. Verse 19, he called um, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. He calls them. They were also mending their nets, and he calls them, and they left the net with their father and the hired servants. That says something about the call of Jesus, brother and sister. He calls them, and we don't see no discussion about what they decided. Did they begin to talk to one another? Did they say, who is this man calling us? We don't see no discussion about that. We don't see them um, talking, well, let me go tell my family goodbye. We don't see any of that. You want to know why? Because it's more about the one who calls us than us. Amen? Because of who he is, he has the power to come into our lives and turn things around. Amen? Because he's the king. And when he calls us, we have to go. And when we think about the irresistible call, we tend to take, take, think of Tulip, which is the total depravity of man, the un un unconditional election, the limited atonement, the irres irresistible grace, and the preservation of saints. So what I believe that we're seeing when he calls these four men to be his disciples is the irresistible grace. Amen? That's what we see. We see irresistible grace at work. He knew who they were. He knew what their job was. And what he says is, you come follow me. Brothers and sisters, it's impossible for us to resist Jesus when he calls us. So we need to stop fighting. Hello? We need to respond to his call. Scripture says that he called and they immediately followed. They, they, listen, brothers and sisters, there, there is no talk. Y'all know how it is. Somebody come to us and tell us some stuff. Man, you know what we say. We got to pray about it. These brothers didn't need a prayer meeting. They heard from Jesus. And when they heard from Jesus, they moved. They moved. Why? Because his call is irresistible. When he calls your name, you have to answer. 
Amen. Amen. Does that mean your life is going to be perfect? We're going to see right. We, look, as we continue to read this scripture, we're going to see these very men turning their back on Jesus. The very one who calls them. But when he calls you, he will tell you all that I call, I will not lose any. All the father has given me shall come to me. That is good news, brothers and sisters. I know sometimes we look at our life and our life is all messed up. And we really, truly wonder if God has really called us. If God has called us, you got a reason to rejoice. You belong to him. Brothers and sisters, you will not be lost. Amen. It's good to know that he is with us. He called, they went. He called, they went. They didn't have no meeting. They didn't say, who are you? All they heard was that Jesus was coming. Jesus shows up. He calls them by their name. Come on, let's go. They say, yes, sir. That's how we got to be. When God calls, when he tells us to do something, we have to do what he says. So there is the kingship of Jesus. There is the irresistible call of Jesus. And the last thing I want to say to you is that his call is transforming. His call is transforming. What did he tell them? What did he tell um, when he called uh, Andrew and, and, and Simon? What did he say? I will make you fishers of men. He didn't say, you need to go and get trained. He didn't say, you need to go over there and sit under somebody else's tutelage. What he said was, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Because they understood how to catch fish. They knew how to catch fish. They knew how to, to, to line up their lines. They knew how to, to cast their net. They knew how to do that. He wasn't trying to teach them how to catch fish. He was trying to teach them how to catch men. The call is to follow him. The call is to let him transform your life. He has the right to come in and change everything around in your life. It's not about our kingdom. It's about his kingdom. It's not about what we want to do. It's about what he wants us to do to do. There is, no, there is no talk about them saying, we just got this boat. We just bought these nets. There's no talk about that. There's no talk about, we, we, we got to feed our family. We can't leave our daddy. There, there's none of that. They, what they do is they follow him and he tells them that I'm going to change your occupation. I'm going to teach you how to Share the gospel in a way that is compelling, that men and women will be drawn to you because you're telling them about me. Y'all looking at me strange. Well, I got good news for you. The call to follow Jesus is still relevant today. <laughs> Amen. It's still relevant today. It's us committing to a life long journey of following Jesus. It's us saying, not my will, but thy will be done. Amen? Amen. Jesus himself yielded his will to the Father. Y'all remember when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, don't you? Things was hard. He, he prayed. Said that like sweat was dropping like blood. And he said to the Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass for me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine will be done. That's how we ought to be living. Answering his call saying, not my will, Father, but your will be done. The call is irresistible. It's a call to follow Jesus. And it's a call to allow him to transform your life. 
Let him do it. He already know about you. He know every, every excuse you going to say. Well, I can't go. I just bought a new lawnmower. I need to test my lawnmower. He know. Y'all, y'all he uses ordinary folk. I'm, I'm talking to us because I want us to see that he used ordinary folk like you and me. There's nothing special about me. The only reason I'm able to stand here is because he got his hand on me. Are y'all hearing me? I declare to y'all that I'm just as jacked up and messed up outside of him. He keeps me together. He gives me strength. Somebody asked me when I first came here, were you nervous? Absolutely. Because I know my shortcomings. Amen. I know my own frailties. When, when, I, when I stand here, y'all, I read the same scripture every, every Sunday. I read the scripture, stand here, read Joshua 1 and 9. Why? Because my knees are shaking. Are, are y'all following me? Because I realize that one slip of the tongue, that I can say something and mess up and have you guys wonder, who is he? How did we miss this? So, brothers and sisters, I stand here relying on God because I know there's nothing in me. So he uses ordinary folk. Let me be your example. I'm ordinary. There's nothing special about me. I'm saved by grace. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we got to get ready to do what God says. Brothers and sisters, let me share. You, it, it, it ain't easy selling your home to move into a place where you don't know anybody. Taking a chance, trusting God. I'm here, you want to know why? Because I trust him. Because I believe in him. Because I realize that he got all power. So brothers and sisters, we can do anything when we're trusting him. When we're leaning and depending on him. So what he's saying is follow me. I got all power in my hand. You know how it is. You, 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 you show up to somebody and they say, I got you today. I got you today. Most of us got them today because we want them to get us next time. <laughs> but the good news about Jesus, he got us all the time. Amen. 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 He got us when we up and when we down. <laughs> Are y'all following me this morning? Yes. That's the God that we serve. How many of you know if it was, if it was simply based on, on what we do, he, he would have left us a long time ago? He would have left me this morning. <laughs> Are y'all, he he, he would have left some of us while we were sitting in here. <laughs> I want us to know that God uses ordinary folk to accomplish his mission. He does not call the qualified. He qualifies those he calls. Listen, listen. Anybody remember Moses? Moses stuttered, but God used him to lead the children of Israel. God used him to give the children of Israel the Ten Commandments. God used him to lead the children of Israel to the Promised Land. Anybody remember Ruth? Ruth was faithful. She tells Naomi, Yo, but look, your people will be my people, your God will be my God. She had a devotion. Are y'all following me? And, and because of her devotion to who God was, she winds up being in the lineage of David. And David, listen, if you look down far enough, you'll find Jesus in that same lineage. Look, what about David? David! Scripture, hey, they just said David was a man after God's own heart. But David was messed up, y'all. Bad. He on his porch and look on somebody else's porch and say, woo! And sets up a husband. Has a husband killed. But he is still a man after God's own heart. God uses ordinary folk. Anybody excited about that? What about Peter? 
Peter denied him three times, twice. He denied him twice before, before the rooster crowed three times. He denied him. But guess what? Peter, he tells Peter, when thou art converted, go get your brothers. Amen? Even in his failure, God was using him. Sometimes, y'all, we think that we've messed up too bad. But when we belong to him, God can use us. What about Mary? What about Mary? Young, virgin girl. That, that the father decided that he was going to use her. She was an ordinary person. He decided that she would carry Jesus. Isn't that good news? What about Paul? I'm, 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 listen, I'm calling these people because I want us to see he used ordinary folk. This is a picture of the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. Right there in Paul's life. Not only did, 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 did Paul change, his name was changed. His name used to be Saul. He was killing folk. Killing them. You mentioned Jesus, he'll cut your head off. But he was, came in contact with the transforming power of Jesus Christ. Of the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. The kingship of Jesus the irresistible call of Jesus. Paul experienced it all. Knocked him off. Blinded him. Listen, send him somewhere. Said, Wait a minute, don't you know he's killing folk? Don't send him in here. Not him, but God had got a hold of his heart. And when he gets a hold of your heart, he can transform you. So why, why did I say all this? Brothers and sisters, we got to recognize that Jesus is the king. We got to recognize that we can't run from his call. And we got to believe that he has power to change us. And he uses ordinary folk like me and you. There's nothing special about us. Hey, listen, why, 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 why did he save Israel? Did he save them because they were the greatest? No, they were the least. And he chose to save them. Why did he save you? Hmm. Hmm. That, that, that's it. It's his grace. It's his grace. It's, it's nothing about us. I told you, if we, if we would just take a time and, and start getting folk to tell stuff that they did, in here, none of us. None of us will be able to walk around, walk out of here with our head hung high. All of us uh, ought to be in a permission, uh, a submissive permission, worshiping him, lifting our hands up to him. God, I thank you. So brothers and sisters, what do we do? What do we do? How do we, how do we go forward? Realizing that we've been called to follow him. We've been called to do his will. We have been called to allow him to work in our life. And we need to remember, this is not about our kingdom. This is not about what we want, but it's about what he wants. He has the power to change us. And he used ordinary folk. Ordinary, uh, ordinary person planted this church. An ordinary pastor but came behind that planter. And an ordinary man stands here today. God uses ordinary folk to do his will. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this reminder of your kingship, your irresistible call, your transforming power, we thank you for bringing light to both the Jews and the Gentiles. We thank you for proclaiming the good news. God, we thank you that we live in where your kingdom 
is at hand. So, Father, we pray that we're used to be living examples of your love, your kindness, and your mercy. God, we pray that we're able to be used by you so men and women will repent and believe the gospel. We thank you, God, that you use ordinary people. We thank you that we don't have to get ourselves right. We thank you that there's transforming power in your name. So Father, we come as your people, yielding ourselves to you for your glory and your glory alone. Father, we thank you that you see in us what we don't see in ourselves. We thank you for the blood of Jesus, for it has washed away our sins. We thank you that we can be used by you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.